All right, how's it going everybody? This is Ismorda, and this evening I have to share with you during my 7 p.m. PST Sunday board game stream, Star Wars Armada. As you can see here, there's a ton of ships on this galactic map going on, and I want to share with you my collection and all the different components and models that you see in front of you. So let me check the stream right quick, and then we'll get started. Oh, that's not working. One sec. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Cool. All right, we're good to go. All right, let me get closer before you can see the action. In case you have not seen this game before, this is Star Wars Armada, which is a tactical miniatures game. That basically you have, as opposed to X-Wing, that you have starfighters that you're tactically dogfighting. Instead, you're commanding space forces, fleets of starfighters, and commanding actual capital ships, negotiating maneuvers and weapon systems to destroy the enemy. So this game is largely two-player. Um, one player being the Rebellion, the other player being the Empire. Granted, in tournament play, you can't have one faction against the same faction. You're just competing against the total number of points of ships and squadrons that you're playing as. But thematically, it's more fun to do Empire versus the Rebellion. And what you play as, as you can see here, is... Starfighter squadrons and capital ships. And you can see, comparing to different capital ships, is there are different sizes. Whereas the squadrons, some of them have squadrons of three, whereas other starfighters, you see a singular ship. As well as some capital ships, they actually see a small um, fleet. Like, for example, this Gazanti does too. And this is just all based on the size. So you're commanding stuff on the map. Um, these ships, for example, are larger than a typical uh, starfighter. And these capital ships have different sizes all well based on how big they are. Granted, unlike X-Wing, Armada the ships you can see are not the scale. You know, like, TIE fighters are not that size relative to an Imperial Star Destroyer. But the whole thematically is the fact that you can see what the ship looks like, and you're negotiating their placement in the galactic space to determine how would these squadrons engage with the capital ships. What types of systems and maneuvers should the capital ships use to effectively take out the fore or aft of an enemy interdictor star destroyer, for example. And so it's fun. It's like, a, a, it's more, this feels more like a war game than a dog fighting game. So that you're, you're positioning units on, on the map. You're trying to negotiate damage, give fleet commands. And that's why it has a different, a de different enough feel that you, if you're getting the X-Wing, you may also want to get into Armada because it's not the same type of game. So anyway, what I wanted to share with you this evening isn't necessarily how to play Armada. 
uh, because there are already a lot of videos on those, but to show you my collection. And so let's get into it. So I'll start with the, re the Rebellion, the Dirty Rebels. So for the Rebels, I don't have any medium-sized um, capital ships. What I have are the large bases and small bases, ironically. So I have three large and all the rest small capital ships. And of course, a ton of squadrons. And I'll go into all the individually here in a sec. Whereas for the Glorious Empire, I have only one large base, but it's the only faction that I have multiple medium bases. All these other Star Destroyers you see to, on the right-hand side, including my carrier, and then small bases. As well as a larger quantity of squadrons than I do the Rebels. But you also have to keep in mind that typically squadron-wise, the Rebel ships were better than the Imperial ships. Whereas the Empire had better capital ships than the Rebellion. And that's why you see uh, I have this huge fleet of medium base, whereas the Rebellions have small based, smaller ships. Um, now it's true you look, if you look at the movies that the Empire had a shit ton more Star Destroyers than the Rebell Rebellion had smaller ships. Don't worry, I have a <laughs> remedy for that coming here in the future, which is the Super Star Destroyer which is ginormous. Um, that's actually, it's been, the release date, I believe, has been pushed from March to June. And that's going to take up, I believe, two and a half lengths of the Imperial Star Destroyer, if memory serves correctly. And that would be more of that Imperial Might flagship presence that you've seen from the movies. To just dominate just by sheer power. Um... Cool. Well, let's uh, get back to the, the Dirty Rebels and show you what I got. So the first ship I have here, typically is known as the Mon Cal Calamari Battle Cruiser. For short, they call it MC, in case you want to know what MC stands for. So this is the MC Battle Cruiser. Whereas next to it is the MC Assault uh, Cruiser. The difference between these two, this one is a typical battle battle cruiser that has forward, most of its most powerful weapons are, are in, the, in the fore of the ship. Um, whereas the MC Assault Cruiser was Akbar's ship, and it's more like a typical, we saw like a battleship out at sea, that it's all of the weapons are at port or starboard on the sides of the ship. And these typically are both called MC-80s. Next up, you remember this from Rogue One. This is the MC-75, which was the capital ship that assaulted, um, I forgot the name of the planet, but the installation where they had the Imperial secret information. And this ship is it's basically well-balanced compared to these other two. This has decent weapons all around the ship. And by decent weapons, what I mean by that is not only the quantity of weapons, but there's different types of weapons in the game, which I'm not going to go into, that have different ranges and different ways that they can do damage. Where it's, where it's close, medium, or far. You have different weapon systems that are either lasers, ion cannons, or, or uh, missiles. Next up we have here, this is more of a carrier-based ship. It's the Pelta-class assault ship, which is a command ship. Next to it are the um, medium transports that you remember from the Battle of Hoth, the GR-75s. This one here, you remember from the movies as well, the CR-90 um, Curling Corvette. And that's what the CR stands for, is Curling Corvette. For example, the Tana 4. Here we have um, other Corvettes. These were the Hammerhead Torpedo Corvettes. That was from also Rogue One. That 
rammed into an Imperial Star Destroyer. And last at the end here, these are, I believe you saw these from the from Return of the Jedi. Um, these are Escort and also um, Empire Strikes Back, part of the Rebel fleet, the Nebulon B frigates. And these are support ships as far as communications and has pretty powerful forward batteries, for, especially for the size of the ship. Now we'll go to squadrons. Here we have a ginormous battalion of X-Wing squadrons. Can you get a better look at one of these? And all of these ships, whether it's the, the uh, capital ships or the squadrons, you could also have um, famous and veteran pilots as opposed to um, generic pilots, for example, if you've played X-Wing before, which could have different values and abilities for the ships as well. I'll swing over here. We have some more Rebel Squadrons. Here you got the A-Wings. I'm sorry, Y-Wings. A couple A-Wing Squadrons. And one of my favorite, the B-Wings. <laughs> Down in the center here, we have bunch of rogue squadrons that fought for the alliance but not necessarily part of the rebel fleet here you have oh god i'm gonna butcher these oh man um one of the uh rebel uh bombers this is a type of krillian um, freighter, similar to the Millennium Falcon, but a different model. And this was an intelligence ship. It has pretty powerful uh, weapon systems. And of course, this one, you remember, is the Millennium Falcon. Modified Carillion freighter. All right, now we go to the Glorious Empire. Let's see, where am I going to start? I will start over here with the medium base ships. Here, you, first off, you have a Quasar Fire 2 class cruiser, carrier. Basically, it's a flying aircraft carrier that's similar to the Pelta class ship here. It's a carrier for storing and launching starfighters, chiefly. As well as has a pretty cool forward anti-squadron gun in the front. I'm trying to see if I can get a good look at it. But just under the tip in the front. Next up, it's one, probably my favorite capital ship for the Empire, the Interdictor Cruisers. These are really cool because they see the bubbles on the top are gravity well that can manipulate the ability for ships to jump to hyperspace. So it has abilities that can affect gravity and people's ability to move around the map. And as you could see from, what was it, episode 8, the Dreadnought class cruiser, you could see took inspiration from the interdictor as far as how the top of the ship looked. As far as weapon systems and design of, of the ship. To left, we have the Victory Class Star Destroyer, um, which was an earlier model of the Star Destroyer, and that's why it's a little bit smaller, with all of its weapons in the front, whereas the Interdectors, their weapon systems are chiefly, no, the, the Interdectors are similar to the uh, MC-75, as pretty good sy um, weapon systems all around the ship. Um, the Victory, chiefly the weapons are in the front. Poor coverage in the back. To left is the giant large base Imperial class Star Destroyer. Again, massive. Anything that's in front of it's going to die. Awesome paint job. This is the Chimera Star Destroyer, actually. That's why you have the cool top as well as similar design on the bottom. 
the left, we have a Gladiator class Star Destroyer, which is even a smaller Star Destroyer than your Victory Friend, but it's highly maneuverable. And this, what's chiefly known for, of course, Victory um, Imperial class Star Destroyers, I'm sorry, Star Destroyers have all the weapon systems in the front. The front of the ship has concussion missile systems, so it's very dangerous in close in the front. Whereas, for example, the Imperial class Star Destroyer is more dangerous at range especially like middle distance. And then to the left here, another one of my favorite ships is the Raider. I first got introduced to the Raider from X-Wing, which was one of the epic ships that came out, the huge ships, which I just fell in love with the design. Because you can see it combines design of not only a Star Destroyer, but also actually a TIE Fighter. Its body is similar to a Star Destroyer, but it's it's got wings on left and right, as well as underneath, let's make a good, good, good shot, that is more like the fins of a TIE fighter. So it's just really cool. So it's a very fast and nimble ship, just like a curling Corvette, and is more dangerous in the front, like typically a Star Destroyer. To left, we have just a couple of transport ships, um, Gazanti class carriers. And then on the end, we have a couple, I forget what the name is, um, but they're light cruisers that chiefly have weapons on the sides, so attacking like a battleship. So they'll s nimble, can swoop and circle around a ship and shoot for, um, adjacent. Now let's look at the squadrons. So in the front, commanding... Um, all of the TIE fighters on both sides. We have Imperial shuttles, re relaying commands. I'm not just trying to be funny, but that's actually what they do in the game as well. And allow you to give commands at a larger range to give squadron commands and have advantageous attacks with your squadrons as opposed to going last. Typically in the game, squadrons go after all the capital ships attack and you, have, and you have to decide whether you just want to move or attack. And if you do a squadron command, you could do it preemptively at the beginning of a battle during the round, and you could do a move and an attack. So just more powerful um, attacks you can do with squadron commands. And here are just a whole battery of just TIE fighters, you know, just the typical just swarming in, being advantageous with just hordes and hordes of, of garbage. Win by numbers. Whereas on this side, we have all of the advanced TIE fighters. My favorite, uh, I'm sorry, I just have a lot of, like I have, I, have, I, have, I have some definite favorites, like I said, on the Rebellion, as far as um, Akbar's ship and B-Wings and Millennium Falcon, but man, there's just a lot of stuff I love in the Empire. And one of them is the TIE Phantoms that you see here in the front. And these have pretty powerful weapon systems as well as can go stealth. So just very cool. And I believe it was from, oh, what was the video game? Rebel, shit. I'll have to come back to on that. But it, there was a video game that just emphasized around fighting and discovering the base of the TIE Phantoms, which is a lot of fun. Um, on the right-hand side here, we have the TIE Advanced. Um, fighters that, for example, um, Darth Vader flew. We heard you have squ squadrons of them. Directly behind, we have some TIE bombers. In the middle, we have some TIE defenders. These were the most um, powerful TIE fighters, comparable to like a B-Wing, because not only do you have multiple um, lasers, it also had ion can ion cannons as well to disable shields and the left hand side here was the most powerful just anti-fighter which were the tie interceptors very nimble and again a lot of weapon systems in the front and then remaining we have in the front here um, a couple decimators which are just very large ships comparable in size to the Korean freighter that also, like the Kirlian Freighter, have 360-degree turrets. 
You may remember these from X-Wing as well. And then in the back, we have Bounty Hunters, which, yeah, it's all, all good, all good. And the front line you see here, we have the Mandalorians. We have two Mandalorian fighters flanking the Fire Spray class Starfighter that Boba Fett flies. The left-hand side here, we have Punishing One. Right side here, and then one of my faves is IG-88's Starship. And then here we have the Hound's Tooth, flown by Bosk. Oh, so so many goodies, so little time. Um, obviously, I'll keep growing my collection as they release more stuff, but um, as far as Romana, they haven't released anything in a long time. They announced beginning of the year about releasing the Super Star Destroyer, which is in production. I've already pre-ordered, just waiting for it to be delivered. The most recent thing that they released this year was the uh, Outer Rim um, campaign it, for Armada, which I have not gotten yet. Um, the previous campaign that they came out with was, um, oh shit, the Krillian Conflict, which is a legacy game using the Armada ships as far as trying to conquer the, the star map and con control planets to give you resources to commence battles at other locations. Turning Armada into a legacy game, as well as providing additional upgrade cards to enhance your already um, acquired squadrons and capital ships. Well, this is my collection in a nutshell. Again, soon I'll begin a Super Star Destroyer and add this to my Galact my star map, but size of the collection, a lot of goodies. Now I'm currently just making different fleets since they came out with um, formats beyond 400 points, 600 and 800 points, that you can just have more of these goodies and battle at the same time, which will be a lot of fun. Just have all the stuff just colliding in this. Doo -doo -doo. But yeah, Armada's a lot of fun. Um, not And not just playing the game, but just collecting these awesome ships, because these are just awesome models, I have to say. Cool, well, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I haven't determined yet what I'm going to do next Sunday, 7 p.m. PST. I may show another collection or show... It'll well, probably be another collection, whether it's KDM or my board game collection but most likely a collection. Um, and that'll be Sunday, 7 p.m. PST. My next stream, though, will be Monday, 7 p.m. PST, which will be my video game, I'm sorry, my online card game stream, and I'll do another stream of Magic the Gathering Arena, chiefly doing some more bolus decks. I made a fun deck that just using um, all cards with Bolas's picture on it just for fun as well as an additional deck and you have to if you're interested definitely check out that uh tomorrow for some magic the gathering arena well thanks for watching again guys hope you enjoy again i highly recommend getting this game and just getting a few ships like you don't have to have a just a huge collection which is expensive to get in the game just get a couple ships and just go for it it's a lot of fun Right, well, this is Morda, and I'll catch you next time.